Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten 774 here, bringing you the next video in our walkthrough for Nancy Drew's Secret of the Old Clock. We have just frozen the game. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was weird. Anyway, we have just finished uh, organizing pies for Jane, so let's go let her know we're done with that. Oh, oh she's gone. Let's snoop through her stuff. What's down here? Oh. I'll bet those are the two brothers that built the inn and Josiah's house. Looks like there might be some kind of tunnel around here. A tunnel? There's something written on the back. Door in parlor window seat? Oh. Door in parlor window seat. Well, this is the parlor, and is this a window seat? Ooh! <gasps> we found a secret passageway! Let's go down it. This must be the light. Oh, wow. Creepy! From the looks of those lanterns, I'm not the only one who's been down here recently. Oh, yeah, because that's the lantern that he was pulling down in the picture. Look here. I feel like someone's watching me. Do you? In the tunnels? That's creepy. What's this? Jeepers, I'm behind one of the walls in Emily's room. I'll bet that's how someone makes that picture move. Oh yeah, they just knock it over through the wall. Ooh, so it sounds like somebody's trying to scare Emily on purpose. Somebody's trying to freak her out. What if someone was just behind that door? Be like, ah! Okay, what do we got down here? Ooh. An old piggy bank! Money! Swell, a dollar! This piggy bank looks like it's been here for a long time. We needed money! Perfect, we won't have to deliver as many telegrams now. We still need two dollars to get the crystal from Mr. Waddell. What's this? Oh, it's a puzzle. Okay, so these are obviously a word. And you can just pick up the pieces and swap them out. Creepies. Is it all on one level, maybe? Creepies. Corner. And then there's like a moon here. This is such a creepy picture. Like, look at this guy. He's got glowing red eyes and everything. wonder if we can rotate this. Oh, yeah, that's it. And then that must be his arm. Um, what else do we got? Need the rest of his arm must go there. And then this looks like a tree. Where would the rest of the tree go? And, like, a gray stone... Is this the rest of his body? Yeah. Um, what about the rest of the grave here? And then these are tree branches. Maybe that goes here? If we rotate it? That, like that, maybe? Well, is this the tree? No, that doesn't look right. Maybe... No... Like this? That looks right. Okay. And we need like a tree trunk, like the base of the tree. This needs to go there. Ooh, this is the top of the mausoleum. At least it sure looks like a mausoleum. This is probably another part of the mausoleum. 
As is that, I betcha. Is this a tree trunk? Kind of. Is that part of the mausoleum? Okay, yeah, that looks right. Um... Let's see. Oh, that's part of a grave, so maybe that does actually go there. Oh, that goes there. Oh! We did something right. I got a record, Creepy's Corner. Okay, I'll have to listen to that in Emily's room. She has a record player. Oh, what was that? Sounds like footsteps. Doesn't it? Is someone watching me? Is someone else in here? A big rock. I do love all of the the ambient noises they have when you're walking around this tunnel. Yes, I better not leave the lights on. Jeepers, that sounds like Richard Tom. This door must open right into his living room. That's how I talk to my cat. Can we go in? I want to go in your house through your trap door. I can't go in there now. Mr. Topham will see me. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll go back the long way then. Cool that we found a secret passageway though. That was fun to find. It's got creepy wind blowing through it. We found a dollar, which is better awesome. not leave the lights on. It's nice to find some money. Let's just crawl out of the window seat. Hopefully no one's in the parlor getting freaked out. Um... Oh, hey. Thanks for doing the pies. The more I do it, the worse I seem to get at it. Here's that box. I'm sure that sewing machine needle is in there somewhere. I see it. Remember, when it comes to using it, you're on your own, kiddo. I think I know why Emily has been seeing and hearing strange things. Well, I'm all ears. Tell me. I found a secret passageway that goes from the inn to Josiah Crowley's old house. And off of it, I found a staircase that leads to a space behind a wall in Emily's room. That's the staircase that's in this old picture. You mean, the noises that Emily's been hearing, the things she's been seeing, it's because someone's been sneaking around behind the wall in her room? It may even be that someone is trying to scare her on purpose. On purpose? Who would want to do something like that? I was able to open the staircase because I saw the picture I just showed you. And I found that picture on the shelf in your podium. You mean it was right there under my nose? Hold the phone! You think I'm the one who's been sneaking around? Can you think of somebody else who may have had access to that picture? Anyone who's ever been behind this desk could have seen that picture. It's hardly fair to go pointing a finger at me. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Well, you're just trying to help Emily, so I guess I shouldn't get mad. She went into town to run some errands. At least that's what I told her to do. Heaven knows she could use some fresh air. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. <laughs> well, if she's not in her room, maybe we can listen to that uh, record. Oh, and we can look in this drawer since she's not going to stop us. <laughs> What's this? Dearest Gloria, if you would do three simple things for me, I would very much appreciate it. First, keep this note for me. Tuck it away in a safe place, and should I ever ask to see it, please allow me to do so. Second, don't mention or show this note to anyone else. Third, don't ask me why. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You are a kind lady who sparkles like good water and makes me think that the sky is the limit. Your grateful friend, Josiah. Okay, so that sounds like a like a code or something, like a passcode. So we should write that down. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You're a kind lady who sparkles like good water and makes me think that the sky's the limit. Should definitely write that down. Dear Gloria, sorry it's taken me so long to answer your letter. I'm still a secretary at the bottling plant and business is booming, so I'm busier than ever. 
In fact, I'm typing this during my lunch break, so please excuse the mustard stains. Still love those bologna sandwiches. Of course I'll take care of Emily if something happens to you. All she has to do is write and I'll come running. But quit worrying about such things. You've got a nice place to live and that sweet little girl to keep you company. You've got it made in the shade. Me, I'm still in the boarding house. It's not the Ritz, but my room is right across the hall from the washroom, and most of the gals here are honest and hardworking and fun. But there are a few bad apples, like this gal named Marion Aborn. She dropped in the other day to borrow some bobby pins, so I went to the drawer to get some for her, only when I turned back around, she was going through my purse. She said it had fallen over and she was just putting it back, but I know what I saw. Anyway, I sure miss you. I'm investing as much money as I can in the stock market because my boss says it's a surefire way to get rich. So next year, maybe I can take the train out there to see you. Better yet, maybe I'll buy a car. Wouldn't that be the butterfly's boots? Right soon, your friend forever, Jane. Ooh, is now really a good time to invest in the stock market? Might be a little risky. And we already looked at Marcel. Interesting. Okay. Is that painting twisted again? It's not. Because Nancy wouldn't do that. Alright, let's listen to that, uh, the record we found. Let's take that one off. And put our Creepy's Corner record on there. I'll never forget the night it all began. That dark, stormy, fateful night when I decided the time had come to rid the world of the creature! But it would take money to do that, and to get money, I needed to confront my arch-enemy, Nick, who had recently become able to transform himself fittingly into a giant warthog. When his forest hideaway came into view, I dismounted and approached the door on foot so I could take him by surprise. I fear that he would hear me prove groundless, for a terrible storm began to rage, washing away the sound of my footsteps. I peered through the rain-streaked window beside his front door, and could see him sitting in front of the fire. He had returned to human form, but the malicious smile on his face suggested that he was recalling his recent poor sign exploits. Seeing that the door was unlocked, I hurled it open and marched across the room toward him. Step away from that bottle of warthog potion, I commanded, and give me the twenty gold coins you stole from my poor servant. I'm not going to give you a thing, save perhaps a taste of my sword. And with that, he drew his sword in an instant I had drawn mine, and so commenced the fiercest sword fight the world had ever known! <laughs> the storm raging outside paled in comparison to our battle. To my surprise, Nick's experiences as a lower life form seemed to have improved his skill as a swordsman. I fainted, I parried, and yet victory eluded me. And soon I began to feel my strength ebbing from me. I was tiring rapidly, summoning every ounce of what little energy remained in my body. I lunged at him one last desperate time. Ouch! Why, you've wounded me. I had managed to wound him on his right arm, <laughs> just above the elbow. Curse you! His words, punctuated as they were by an untimely clap of thunder, sent a shiver down my spine. Save your breath, I intoned, and give me those gold coins. Here, take your precious coins. He tossed the bag of coins onto a chair, but as I reached for them, he reached for his bottle of potion, and in a matter of seconds, my night had gone from bad Horrible.
Well, all right then. It's an interesting little story. Put that one back on there. I guess now we can try and sew that dress. Let's give it a go. So we have the pieces. I bet a needle goes here. Oh, okay, well, we got the needle in first. So here's the needle. Put that there. And then we'll take the dress pieces. Put those next to the needle. So the goal is to stay on the white line as much as possible. And if you don't, Nancy will make you start over. I can do better than this. Can I really? I better start over. Sure, we want to start over? I mean, it's not that bad. I'd better start over. I made too many mistakes. I'd better do it over. Seriously? Ugh. Nancy's really picky. Miss Drew, not bad at all. I was holding my breath while I was doing that. I was trying to focus so hard. But okay, so that's what you have to do to get the dress done. Uh, let's pause this part right here, and then we'll bring the dress to Mr. Archer in the next part. Thanks for watching, fellow detectives. See you soon.